Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from the break. We will now proceed to our next executive interview with Collins Aerospace on initiatives to facilitate the availability of skilled aviation professionals in Africa. Our guest on stage is Beth Shikan President, Ms. Marie Madeleine Gianni. Marie developed the Beth Shikan Foundation's mission and model and made it happen throughout the last six years. Since 2015, Beth Shikan Girls Empowerment Projects have involved more than 36,000 individuals. The foundation received in 2017 the Italian Diversity No Profit of the Year Award. Since 2018, as founder and main contributor to the foundation's growth, Marie is part of the International Ashoka Network. Marie is, Marie is part of the International Ashoka Network of High Impact Social Entrepreneurs. The session will be moderated by Mr. Jens Diesel, the Regional Sales Director, Collins Aerospace Avionics. Jens is the Regional Director for Africa and Turkey within Collins Aerospace Avionics business. One of his main tasks is to ensure flexibility in reporting to an increasingly demanding marketplace. Before, name, before being named as the Regional Director for Africa in January 2020, Jens was Director Sensors and Fire Protection for EU, Middle East, and Africa, supporting the integration of the, uh, of the SNFP sales force into Collins Aerospace Avionics sales team. So I leave this in the able hands of Jens Diesel, and uh, we are ready for takeoff. Thank you, and over to you, Jens. Thank you very much, Maureen. Great opportunity. Great opportunity to be here with Bet She Can um, today. Thank you very much, Madeleine, Madeleine, Madeleine for, for your time today. And I, I would say, let's, let's get right into it. Um, tell us more about Bet She Can. Um, first of all, hello, everybody. Thank you for the invitation and, and really appreciate being here today with you all. Um, yes. A few words about Bet She Can. Bet She Can is a young nonprofit foundation. It was found um, six years ago. And um, it's all about girls' empowerment. So basically, our mission is to uh, bring to young girls the tools to um, discover their own potential, their own passions without being limited by stereotypes or um, anything else. It's really about um, making sure that we can grow and make our own choices in freedom. Uh, so that's Bet She Can Mission. We develop it with numerous empowerment projects, mainly in Italy and also in France. And actually people often ask me, but you know, I'm, I, I, actually I'm also a salesperson. I work in a completely different industry and I wasn't in the nonprofit sector. And, and why, you know, why this idea? Why, why did it come to your mind? And it took time, I think, uh, people sometimes have the idea, okay, it's just like a thunder and, and it comes and it strikes you and then you, you, you get on a new journey. Uh, no, it took time, but there were some specific moments where I was shocked and I grew um, and I was more aware of certain things and I said, okay, I need to act now. And one of the moments, can I tell you about this moment, Jens? Sure, sure, sure. please go ahead, yes. <laughs> I am going personal, but I think it's important. I, I, I'd love to hear it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so actually, I do remember I was with a friend in Milan, in a park with our two young girls that were playing together. They were both two or three years old. And I looked at them and I was happy, it was sunny. And I told my friend, oh, I'm so happy I have a daughter, I have a girl. And she told me, well, you know what? 
I would have preferred boy. And I was sort of, why? I, I couldn't get it. I say, why? And she say, you know what? I think he, he, he would have an easier life. And I was, and I know it might be obvious and people say, but why would you be shocked? But I was really shocked, first of all, because I was shocked because what an answer. And then I was even more shocked because then I realized and I say, she's right, she's right. And the fact that she was right was for me so tremendously shocking. Mm -hmm. I had to do something. I said, that's not the world I want to live in. So, and those are, and it didn't happen from the one day to another, but just to, to share with you that change happens, you, you, you have experiences and, and, and they make you more aware of what's happening and, and what you, you can do to, to contribute to some, uh, to some better future. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that was, you know, the, the birth of Betchiken. Yeah, that, that, that's a great story, Marie Madeleine. Thanks for sharing. And, and I think you're you are, you are absolutely right with doing that. We have so many people out there who, who notice things are going wrong, but, but only a handful are really taking actions. So that, that's great. And, 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 and I, I think everything we heard, we, it's great that Betchiken is out there and that people are caring and, and doing things. Um, so Marie Madeleine, why, why STEM and, and, and girls? Um, so I, I think there is an issue with um, um, scientific topics. So they, they call them with the acronym STEM. Um, and, and actually there is a distinction because, because there are some signs that are more theoretical than others. Some science like medicine, biology are more linked to um, environment, human body, human care, and, and stuff. So the more theoretical you get, the less women we have. And actually, in, in Europe, it's about 15 to 20% of women. Uh, in Italy, we are in the average. And, um, and that's that doesn't work because we need in, in those scientific spheres to in aviation also, for instance, we need diversity. We need to, uh, for everybody, every, every different kind of individual. And, and it's not about only genders, it's about diversity in general to provide a different point of view it's important for the industry. It's not only important for young girls, women, um, uh, every kind of different people to be able to enter in such sectors, in such studies, in such careers. It's also important for the industries uh, because it, it provides different point of views. It's, it's a leverage, a, a huge leverage for innovation and creativity. And if everybody looks alike and thinks alike, how, how can you create great impact ideas? How can you change the world? How can you face the huge challenges we're facing right now about sustainability, about uh, making sure that yes, we can travel, but that on the other side, we're respectful on the environment. Those are huge challenges. We need diversity. And, and different, um, you know, way of thinking to, 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 to meet those challenges. Mm -hmm. that, that's great insight. And, and I, I totally agree with you. So how, what, what, how is Betchi Ken approaching that, that whole topic now? What, what is your philosophy behind that? Um, so actually, uh, we take an uh, unusual approach. Uh, we like being unusual. <laughs> so it's about uh, two things. First, our target. So uh, we focus on young girls, age eight till 12, the so-called preteens. Why? 
uh, because we believe it's the right timing to start thinking about what I want to do, what is my potential, what are my talents, what are my passions, uh, without any constriction. Uh, stereotypes are here from the birth. So if we wanted to, you know, impact before the stereotypes come in, that would be really hard because we would have to try to, to enter, uh, I don't know, that, that, that it, it would be probably a too early age. Um, so we choose this one because we thought it was the right moment. Yes, we do have stereotypes, but yes, we do have the flexibility of the mind and, and actually, um, your choices are not already done when you are uh, in in in, the, um, in when you are um, older when you are a young adult you have already taken a path you have already made a choice of of you know uh, jobs uh, maybe studies maybe uh, something else and then then it's more difficult to take. A, a different one. So that's the first thing. The second one is we try to bring not only tools about STEM, but in general tools about uh, self-esteem, awareness, uh, potential, talents, uh, a broader scope. Uh, so that's we, the way we handle our STEM projects. And if you would like to, I could go more specific because that's you know the philosophy of it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it would be great if you could provide one or two examples of, 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 of what you just described a little bit more into detail. That would be great. Uh, yes. So actually, we do have a formula which is really focused on STEM. And it's called, so in Italian, and we work mainly in Italy, it's called Con l'altra meta del cielo, which basically could be translated as a with the other half of the sky. Uh, it's about young girls, so it's primary school girls, 9, 10, 11 years old, working for the whole school year on a STEM project, so that could be aviation, that could be automotive, that could be robotics, that could be anything related to very scientific topics, and they are working together with um, young students, so young adult students, eight, 16 to 18 years old, from technical high school. So in Italy, you have, and I think there is an equivalent here too, of, of the, it's not university, it's uh, from 16 onwards, you can choose those technical school where you learn to, um, uh, to, to um, some technical skills in order to be able to do a technical job. In Italy, in those schools, it's mainly young men, so about 90, 99%. So basically we put those young men, young adults, 16 to 18, to work together on a project that they are um, putting together. So they have to think about what kind of project they are going to do with those young girls. And they work together for the whole year. And it creates a magic because young girls, learn more about STEMs, about those technical schools, about those technical jobs. Those young adults learned about knowledge transfer, teamwork, managing a project, project management, all skills that are super useful when you start working, but that are probably not taught in, in, in you know, the technical schools or at school in general. So that's really useful because it's really something, it's a win-win project. On one side, girls are winning. On the other side, those young uh, adults, mainly boys, are winning too. Um, that's the kind of project we do. <laughs> that, that's really cool. Um, so hearing all that, I mean, I'm, I'm a father of, of two girls as well. Um, what, what, what is your recommendation or what are your thoughts on how, how can we as, as, or I as a father and we as parents and adults uh, contribute um, to that? Wow. 
That's a big question. Uh, and actually, I, I don't have uh, the magic recipe. Uh, if there was probably, uh, we wouldn't need that chicken. <laughs> So, uh, and other projects that are done to empower girls and, and, and make sure they do have the possibility, uh, they, they uh, so anyway, um, I think it's about observing uh, respectfully our children, uh, young, uh, young people, and uh, and trying to work on our stereotypes. And that's super hard because they're embedded in adults they're in. It's really hard that you can do gender bias courses. Uh, you can work on a workness, you can read a lot, but it's really, really hard to get rid of all our stereotypes because some of those actually are useful. A stereotype actually is when your mind automatically processes things we see or we feel without uh, thinking about it. It's an automatism. So in some cases, automatisms are useful. The issue is in most of the cases, they are not. So it takes time. I think it's a, a long journey, Jens. I'm, I'm sorry, I do not have, you know, one answer for you here. <laughs> no, no, and, and you're totally right. There, there's always more to it, right? And, and uh, I, I totally agree. It's, it's um, everybody, I think, has, has a portion of it in his own hands um, and, and has, has, has to be open-minded, maybe overcome um, his own... Um, um, his own prejudices, maybe as yes. well, and, and do the best thing um, to looking at children to really create open-minded, uh, uh, self-empowered uh, kids uh, going forward, and that that hopefully will change something going forward. I, I totally agree. Yes. Um, so, Marie Madeleine, how how do you how do you make sure that that your model is re replicable as well? I, I think that that's something you're doing as well, right? You said you started in Italy. Now you're moving. You moved to France as well. So it's it's growing. It's good yes. that it's growing. Um, so how how are you ensuring um, that that it is growing? Yeah, and then that it is uh, re re replicable. Replicable. Yeah, uh, it's hard for me to here in Montreal. It's uh, morning, so I need some coffee before <laughs> I'm able to <laughs> speak as this world. Anyway. Uh, so um, actually our mission is to make sure that we, it's not a marketing thing. There is, and I, 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 I might be uh, a bit provocative while saying that, but there is a lot of pink washing going on. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's more marketing or communication thing. Uh, you know, big words, diversity, and things like that. Uh, we try to be very concrete and make sure that when we start a, a project and a formula, it's really bringing specific results first. So we measure the results on the ground before, after we measure change. It's hard to do, but we do that. That's the first thing. And then we provide the schools, libraries, museum, community we are working with, with the tools we use. So that once we've moved to another project in another region, in another territory, those uh, actors of, of the local uh, territory can replicate what mm -hmm. the activities that we did um, with them. They do have the skills, they do have the tools, we train them so mm. that it's not about, you know, bet she can doing things. It's about bet she can enabling uh, the, the communities we work with to, to do things. Mm. 
So we would be happy to talk more about the formulas we have in place. We are absolutely happy to share those, um, to share our methodology, to share our tools, so that you know you might want to replicate here um, this Conlaltra de Meta del Cielo formula. Please do so. Get in contact with us, and we will share how we do things, how it works for us, our experience. And maybe it helps. That's the philosophy. Yeah, that that sounds very interesting and, and like a very good plan. Um, I I want to start with some uh, Q and A's from 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 the audience as well, Marie Madeleine. Um, so the the first one actually would be: What are the the, the future plans for Betchikan? And are there any plans to ex extend the initiative into Africa? Wow, great questions. Uh, so um, I, I, what I would like to do is to move um, steadily. So we started the first five years in Italy. Now we are starting some activities actually with Collins uh, in, in France. Uh, what I would like, so I'm not sure we will, you know, start activities at Bet She Can in other countries or continents really soon. Uh, but what I would like definitely to do is to um, make contacts. And, you know, if there are here um, initiatives similar to what we're doing or that could be complimentary, please contact us. There is uh, all the contact information on our website and, and we can you know, share experience and information and we can definitely share our knowledge. And we would be so glad that you share yours too, because that's also, you know, we say it's important to have diversity in a, point of view, experience, and opinions, it's also applicable to, to Bet She Can. So we would like so much to have your point of view, what works here, what are the main challenges, how you know we could um, think to work on it for having as Bet She Can activities in the next few years directly in Africa, probably no. But for that kind of, of sharing, and, and putting together our knowledge and leveraging it, absolutely from now on, yes. Mm -hmm. that, that's great. So what, what, would be, what would be the best way to get in touch with you? As you said, the homepage, are, are you on, on, on uh, LinkedIn, for example, as well? Yes, that, absolutely, Fine. absolutely. You find us on all social medias, all main social medias. And yes, definitely our LinkedIn page might be the best channel uh, one for once because we post regularly all about you know all our projects and everything but also because you can contact us directly on the linkedin page too definitely mm -hmm. okay that's great that's great um next question marie madeleine so when when you started uh bet she can or launched bet she can what what were the major challenges you were faced with uh, there was a lot of paperwork and that was a challenge. I don't know administ administration here. I imagine it's complex. In Italy, it's a nightmare. And so it was a nightmare. And at a certain point, I thought, okay, you know what? Why, why should I do it? It's too much of a um, it, it's too hard. I, I've not yet started and I'm already in such a complex thing and it's, it's really complicated and and then i was able to 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 do the paperwork and to set up the foundation and that was good and then we had our first project so actually we hadn't yet the money from companies or 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 uh, yeah we are largely supported by private companies so companies that support our activities so we say okay let's put the money ourselves and get things started and the first project was beautiful amazing but 
we had a hard time to get participants. And I was so depressed and I say, you know what, a lot of hard work and we are not uh, having the, the right side of the group. So we had to cancel it. And then a friend, which actually lives in, in Nairobi, and she's really a great friend. And she told me, you know what? If you had the people lining up and the families with their young girls lining up in front of Bet She Can projects, probably you wouldn't need Bet She Can because all people were would already be aware that you know, they need to empower young girls and they need to make them discover their potential, etc. And I say, oh, she's right. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you learn a lot. At the beginning, you know, it's everything is new. You learn a lot. There is a, a great learning curve. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with that. Um, Marie Madeleine, one, one other question. If you think back now to 2015 when everything started and, and we now have 2021, what, what is the, the most uh, outstanding, the most impressive moment learning you had in, in, in all the time? Is, is there one you're thinking of more often than others, really one that, that, uh, that excited you the most? Uh I, I really have a hard time picking one. I have to say that each time, each time I go and actually now I live in Montreal, so the projects are done in Italy. That's not so easy to do, but each time I'm in on the ground, seeing how a project is handling, uh, the reaction of the young girls of the also we are very inclusive so it's young girls it's their family it's young boys it's young adults too sometimes and to see those people you know smiling and and happy and providing us um, great testimony oh yes if I had to say one thing I do remember when I was, when we did the first time the formulas con l'altra metà del cielo, I had some amazing discussions with the young adults uh, that were involved in the project. They were, you know, boys 16 to 18. And at the beginning, they were sort of, okay, I don't want to do that. I don't want to work with young girls age 10 on a STEM project. What? And at the end of the project, they were coming to me and saying, wow, I was astonished. Those girls are incredible. Those girls are magic. They are brave. They are bold. They are creative. They were amazed. And to see this amazement, yes, that's probably one of the moments I say, OK, we're doing that right. People are changing here. That's great. That, that's a great example, Marie Madeleine. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think we're coming to the end. Um, and and one, one last question, um, or not a question, actually, one ask. Um, if, if you would deliver a key message and, and you now have uh, one minute to do so, what, what would it be? What, what should everybody um, take away from, from our interview here today? Uh. So, um, as I mentioned before, it takes time. It's not, it's not, you know, like this. It, it's a journey. It's a journey of awareness. It's, it's a journey of listening, of, of, of trying to work on oneself too, and and understand how you know we we judge people without having any knowledge about what they are, and just by putting labels. So I would say, one, beware of labels. We put on the other people's forehead and, 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 and just and on ours too, actually. Let's try to, to you know, pull those labels out. Uh, and, and the other thing I, I, I would say is actually Beware also, and you know that, Jens, because we, we already talked about that, beware of being under the 30%. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> if you come in a room and there is um, a, a different group and 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 it's smaller than 30 percent of the whole group then that doesn't work they probably are not feeling comfortable so if you enter in a huge boardroom and there are 20 men and two women that's not working okay. studies show that for a minority and it could be about gender, color, anything, you know, religion, anything, culture, uh, nation, whatever. Uh, if a, a minority is less of 30% of the whole group, then this minority typically is not feeling comfortable, is not feeling in their comfort zone. So beware of the 30%. Good. Yes, that's great. Marie Madeleine, uh... Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for introducing Bet She Can. Um, thank you for, for going into, into details, your, your, your personal world of feelings uh, in some areas as well. It was great having you um, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you very much, Marie Madeleine. Thank you very much, Jens, for this session. We have uh, gotten to learn the story of Bet She Can. And um, we commend you for the good work that you're doing. Continue up with the spirit to promote and support young, uh, young girls um, in uh, developing uh, their careers. And we certainly do look forward to the future that you will expand your initiatives to a greater uh, reach. And uh, this brings us to the close of this executive interview. We now will be proceeding to the next session in the next one minute. The next session is a very exciting panel discussion uh, where we have uh, a very good proposition of panelists to discuss about the uh, to discuss on the theme uh, what are the measures to facilitate affordable training and development of skilled young aviation professionals in Africa. They will look at various uh, aspects, financing, um, looking at uh, access to the training facilities, and what we can do in terms of on the job training opportunities for these young uh, professionals. Stay tuned, join us through the platform, click on the session panel discussion too, and uh, let's join the next panel. Thank you and uh, goodbye. Thank you, bye-bye.